Hello and welcome to the 2020-2021 school year at Hilton High School. My name is Dr. Green and this is Student Orientation. Did you really mess up the very first line? This is new student orientation. Not this year. If you haven't noticed, we're in the middle of reopening schools while we recover from a global pandemic. So everyone is new to school this year. Including me. I'm Mrs. Salagis and I'm the new assistant principal here. Welcome to Student Orientation. We have some special guests joining us later that will share some specific information just for our new students. But let's start with the basics that apply to everyone. Cohorts. We've got one, two, three, four of them. You know what cohort you're in. Cohort one comes on Mondays and Thursdays. Cohort two comes Tuesdays and Fridays. Cohort three comes Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And cohort four doesn't come at all. You're 100% remote. And if someone doesn't know their cohort? They should check the portal. And the portal is? The portal refers to Infinite Campus. It's our student information system that families can access to view their children's schedules and grades. You can find more information about how to access the portal on the High School Student and Family Connection page of our school website. Okay, cohorts and portals, check. Let's move on to arrival. You're coming by bus, getting dropped off, driving yourself, or walking. If you're riding the bus, you'll notice there are fewer students. Specific seats will be off limits to ensure social distancing. The windows on the bus will be down to increase fresh airflow. If you ride the bus with a sibling, you'll be expected to share a seat. Yes, that means you get to see even more of that lovely human you've been stuck indoors with since March. The buses will unload at 7.10 a.m. This is a change from last year's time of 7.05 a.m. if you're comparing notes. When you unload, there are two wide walkways that lead to two entrances to the school. Each of these two entrances have two doors that are more than six feet apart. So there will be four lines for bus riders to enter the building. Please maintain a safe social distance of at least six feet while waiting in line to enter. This could be uncomfortable if it is raining and when it gets colder, so please dress appropriately. If you're being dropped off, this can be done in the upper lot in the parent drop-off loop or in the lower lot in front of the steps, whichever is your preference based on traffic flow. If you get dropped off at the upper parent loop, there will be one line to enter at door 28 by the band room. Please maintain a safe social distance of at least six feet while standing in line to enter. This could be uncomfortable if it's raining and when it gets colder, so please dress appropriately. If you get dropped off at the lower loop, you can take the steps up to door one or go to door three on the first floor. Please maintain a safe social distance of at least six feet while waiting in line to enter. This could be uncomfortable if it is raining and when it gets colder, so please dress appropriately. If you're driving, you need to have a parking pass. Do this before the start of the school year. Passes will be distributed on the first two days of school, so yes, it's okay to park on campus those first two days without the pass hanging from your rearview mirror. The parking lot will be monitored for passes beginning on the third day of school. The parking pass application was emailed, tweeted, and instant back in July, so there's no excuse not to have this taken care of ahead of time. If you still don't have it filled out and need to know where to find it, there's a copy of the form linked in Dr. Green's newsletter, located on our new High School Student and Family Connection page on the High School website. If you are a walker, you can enter at any of the previously mentioned entrances. And guess what? What? Please maintain a safe social distance of at least six feet while waiting in line to enter. This could be uncomfortable if it's raining and when it gets colder, so please dress appropriately. Really? Really. Now here's an overview of the different entrances. Wait a minute. How do we gauge if we're actually six feet apart? I mean, I don't know about you, but I typically don't carry around a tape measure in my back pocket. Well, I do. And I happen to be six feet tall on the dot. So as long as I can lay down comfortably between you and the person lying in front of you, you're good to go. Noted. Checking yourself or having your parents check you for signs or symptoms of COVID-19 before coming to school is an important way to stop the spread. Prior to the first day of school, every family must log on to the Infinite Campus Parent Portal and electronically verify that they will complete a daily symptoms check and only send their child to school if they are symptom free. A record of this compliance will remain on file in Infinite Campus for the 2020-2021 school year. Family health screening procedures have been mailed, emailed, and posted on the HCSD website for families. Before leaving for school, follow these steps. Check your temperature. If it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, you should not come to school. Use your assurance card to review each of the signs and symptoms. If you have any new or worsening signs or symptoms that cannot be explained by a pre-existing condition that has been diagnosed by a doctor, you should not come to school. Examples of pre-existing conditions include asthma, allergies, Crohn's disease, or migraines. 
If you do have a temperature or any newer worsening signs or symptoms, call your school attendance office to report your absence and your medical provider for further direction. If you have no signs or symptoms, get your mask, wash your hands, and come to school with your assurance card. When you arrive at school, you will enter one of two lines. If you have your assurance card that shows that you have checked your signs and symptoms and are clear to enter the building, you will go to one line. Your assurance card can be the card that was mailed home, one you printed on green paper yourself, or a photo of the card on your phone or iPod. Printed cards can be attached to the outside of your backpack, on a lanyard, or held in your hand. Have your assurance card wherever you can easily keep it and show it daily. These cards will change colors and be reissued if or when COVID-19 symptoms change. If you arrive at school and have not checked your symptoms or forgot your assurance card, or your family hasn't signed an assurance document in Infinite Campus, you will get into a different line and have your temperature taken. You will be asked to wait in a short line six feet apart from others. There will be signs showing you where to wait. A staff member will be checking temperatures. They will be wearing a mask, face shield, and gloves. They will check your temperature with a non-contact thermometer. This thermometer will be pointed at your forehead for about two seconds. If your temperature is below 100.0 degrees, you can go straight to class. If your temperature is above 100.0 degrees, you will be asked to go to the nurse's office and be given some time to cool down before being checked again. If your temperature is below 100.0 when it's rechecked, you can go to class. If it is still at 100.0 or above, you will be sent home. If you come to school with any signs or symptoms or start to feel them while you're at school, let a teacher know. You will need to go to the nurse for screening and may have to go home to keep yourself, your friends, and family safe. Let's talk about transitions between classes. Passing times have been extended from five minutes to seven minutes to allow for a socially distanced release from classrooms and to account for some one-way traffic patterns in our more narrow hallways around the building. Students are expected to adhere to these routes to help maintain safe social distancing. This is not business as usual. Passing time will not be the fun socialization opportunity as it was in the past. I'm sorry for this, but this is our new reality and we all play a part in helping to keep our school community safe. You cannot congregate in the hallways and chat with friends. You must remain actively moving and socially distanced from other students and go from one class directly to the next. Restrooms are not to be used during passing time. Lockers are not to be used during passing time. Again, this is inconvenient, but it's about keeping our school community safe. Now let's go to Mr. Legault to talk about classroom spaces. Thanks, Dr. Green, and hello. My name is Mr. Legault. Let's take a look at what classrooms will look like this year. We have taken several precautions to ensure your health and safety while at school. As you probably know by now, our student population has been divided into cohorts so that we can reduce the number of students in the classroom each day. Classroom furniture has been rearranged to allow for a safe social distance of six feet between student desks and students will be required to wear masks while in class. In addition to nightly cleaning, appropriate sanitizing will be done throughout the day to maintain a clean environment for all students with emphasis on high contact areas and surfaces. Now back to Dr. Green with information about lunch. All right, let's talk about lunch. Yes, finally, I'm starving. Here. Really? Really? Oh, you mean let's tell them about lunch. Got it, sorry. Anyway, for lunchtime, early lunch students can access their locker only after lunch and prior to returning to class. Middle lunch students can access either on the way to lunch or back to class, and late lunch students can only access on their way to lunch. Students must maintain a safe social distance and not use their locker unless lockers within six feet are not in use. Are the commons going to be set up differently than they normally are? Indeed. Commons 2 and 3 will be equipped with student desks spaced at an appropriate social distance for students to use during lunch sets. Students cannot move desks closer to sit with friends during lunch. We are identifying additional spaces for students to eat lunch. What will dismissal look like this year? Dismissal times will be slightly staggered this year. Only students who ride a bus will be dismissed by their teachers without a bell at 2.10 p.m. The buses will depart at 2.15 p.m. so students should walk with purpose while maintaining social distance. Those who walk, drive, or are being picked up will be dismissed at the 2.15 p.m. bell and must maintain safe social distancing. Should we tell them about the new student and family connection page? 
Definitely. If you jump onto our school website at www.hilton.k12.ny.us, you'll notice it has had a bit of a makeover. We redesigned the site and added a link to the menu to our new Hilton Family Connection, which is now your go-to hub for school updates and information. Here, you'll have access to our school handbooks, tons of resources for both students and their families, and of course, updates from me. You'll also find some information about new student orientation there. Speaking of new student orientation, let's turn it over to our special guest for some information specifically for our new students. Hi everyone, I'm Kennedy McKinney. And I'm Riley Ball. And we're here to talk to you about new student orientation. This year, new student orientation will happen a little differently than in years past. New students will be completing some activities online to get them accustomed to Hilton High School. Where can they access these activities, Kennedy? New students will have access to a Google Classroom designed specifically for them. It contains a ton of need-to-know information for new students, as well as activity modules for new students. Each module contains an action item for students to complete so that we know they are up-to-date with school rules and policies. These action items include our Academic Honesty Code, Digital Citizenship, and the Dignity for All Students Act, which is New York State's anti-bullying legislation. Yep, it's super important to complete these action items because they can save you from getting yourself into trouble accidentally this school year. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Better safe than sorry. Will new students have a chance to ask questions at any point before school starts, Riley? Good question, Kennedy. Yes, we will be holding a live Zoom session on September 2nd from 7 to 8.30 p.m. to give new students and their families an opportunity to ask questions that they may still have. Perfect. Stay tuned for an update from Dr. Green for more information on that. That's all for us. Now back to Ms. Salagis for an update on remote learning. Thanks, Kennedy and Riley. Okay, folks, time to get real about expectations for Chromebook use this year. Most of you already have your Chromebook, so don't worry, freshmen, you'll get yours soon. We want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your devices, so here are a few guidelines you need to follow this year. One, you should be bringing your Chromebook and your charger to school and home with you each day. This will help to ensure that you're able to participate fully in all of your classes, even if your Chromebook battery is low. Two, charge your Chromebook at night. If you tend to forget your Chromebook at home, put it on your nightstand to charge right under your cell phone. You remember to bring your phone every day, right? As someone who's left her computer at home a time or two, I'm telling you, it helps. Three, Zoom etiquette. When you're logged into classes on your remote learning days, the expectation is that your camera's on, your face is in view, and that your microphone is muted to start. Please be respectful in your Zoom classes. Four, please be smart when using your school computer and remember that your digital footprint is permanent and searchable. Your behavior online can have a significant impact on your future, both positively and negatively. And lastly, please remember that once you press send, anything you post on social media is fair game. It can be saved, copied, and shared with just about anyone. Make good choices and remember that your behavior online can have repercussions in school as well. Keep it positive. Use social media to spread kindness. Now over to Dr. Green for some final thoughts. Thank you for taking some time to watch this video and be prepared for the 2020-2021 school year, the year that will be unlike any other. You may still have questions, and that's okay. We may have answers, and if we don't, we will work together in getting those answers. Helton High School is a special place. I'm sad that you won't get to spend as much time physically in the building as in the past, but we all need to work together while being six feet apart to be able to return to school five days a week. If you have a question about a specific class, be in contact with the teacher. If you have a question about your grad plan or need other support, be in touch with your school counselor. If you need assistance after that, contact your assistant principal. And please know that I'm always available to help as well if you have additional questions. This is going to be a challenge, but we will be better and stronger for overcoming adversity together. And remember, once a cadet, always a cadet.